Alrighty, I'm just going to kick on. So welcome, thank you for coming everyone. Um, very quickly, we've got 82 subscribers to the Big Amateur Telescope YouTube channel. Pretty soon we're going to be in tri triple figures. When we get to triple figures, it, the Big Amateur Telescope YouTube channel is going to have a URL that says the Big Amateur Telescope rather than its current URL, which is YouTube blah, FC912F9. Blah, blah. So if you're watching and you haven't subscribed to the Big Amateur Telescope YouTube channel, now is your chance. We can get up to 100, which will be great. OK, that's that. Things uh, that we discussed last week that we haven't managed to uh, enact. I know I was certainly very busy, and I know a number of the bat mods were very busy as well. Uh, we haven't written down the cutoff dates for targets so people know when to stop imaging the various targets. And uh, we, I mean, this is to be expected, we don't have a website up and running because obviously it's a massive job getting a website, but we are planning on having uh, uh, the Big Amateur Telescope website which will be in partnership with Discord. We're not going for a forum yet. And um, yeah, so, I mean, you probably won't be ready for a while, to be fair. But on that website, there'll be what we're shooting. Um, there'll be more instructions. Uh, it'll be like a, a headline banner to tell people what we're doing, why we're doing it, how we're doing it, that kind of stuff. The stuff that Discord isn't very good at, the kind of like signposting and, and just pure information. Um, as well as, you know, what we're shooting and also the results of what we're shooting. OK, so those are two things that we haven't uh, gotten done since last week that we're planning on getting done. Um, we have actually had quite a lot of people upload data to M27. Woo. Do we keep the music? Or do I change the music? I don't want it to be too loud. Anyway, there we go. So uh, this is what I did a week ago. We have had more data in since then. Uh, and we've got some more. Actually, Noah did this one last week as well. We've had a few more, quite a lot more of the deep data come in. I think you'll see there's more. Some This is uh, Stefan, I think. Was it Stefan? Who did this one? Anyone remember? That was not mine. That is the one from, I forgot his name. Um, was oh, it no. No, uh, no, no. Mine uh, is RGB, that's not from mine. It's from Spinodo. Um, yeah. That my crazy business. Yes, that's right. Say, yeah, that's right. Uh, which is good. And um, you see, actually, there's a lot more. There's, it's really nice, actually. The um, there's not a lot of definition in the O3, but there's a in the in the core. Like we, we, but the hydrogen alpha, there's quite nice little clouds there, and also there's a lot more uh, in the in the uh, in the. I'm going to turn the music off now. Stop it, because it's just it's stopping me thinking. Uh, there's a there's a lot more of the dim bits, which is really nice, um, and we've had a few people now. Uh, Stefan, was that you? This one is mine. Yeah, well done, mate. Lovely uh, seeing the sort of rings of the outer O3 there. The core is lacking a bit of detail. It's super. I think what we're all discovering is that it's hard doing this. This is Hatman Dew, I believe. Did an interesting SHO, if I remember. Uh, I see quite a lot of nice detail in the core. If I knew how to enlarge the center, I would but I think my system will tip over if I do. He also did this. You see quite a lot of detail there in the core. So we are going places. I still think it needs a proper big... Um, so in terms of colours, and I, I'm totally biased, I actually find my one more striking. I know that's awful to say. Um, but there is definitely more data to be had. And it's one thing I think that we're all finding is that it's incredibly... It's just a real pain. It's a real pain um, processing this data, right? And I just thought, um, I just 
uh, highlight how much of a pain it is to do this and because it might be that we can do something that makes our life a bit easier so um, here's APP I've just uploaded some hydrogen alpha data from the bat from this and you know here's one one person stack I think pop tart actually it's very nice really nice stuff um, I, and uh, what else we got I'm going to try getting uh, loosens up here we go another one and uh, Endolf actually tried a bit of lucky imaging with like five second subs actually you can see some nice detail in there in the H alpha but what's clear right and this is the first problem is that everyone obviously is doing different frames so what you have to do is you have to choose a frame uh, presumably quite cropped in for most people's stacks you then have to um, get everybody's stack aligned with your frame that you've cropped into right so let's say you did you, you chose a frame a bit like that right you have to get everybody all the multitude of stacks with all the different angles aligned using star align in pix insight is what i use so that they're all sitting on top of each other now there's i don't know there's like 10 h alpha subs so you've got to do that for all them then you've got to do the o3 and the s2 and the luminance and the r and the g and the b and so you're looking at a lot of work just to get everything star aligned so that every single channel of data that you've got sits on top of each other and, and when you've done that you can then uh, run those um, aligned images in something like PixInsight you can find out which the sharpest ones are you can find out which ones have got the best signal to noise ratio and then you can make your, your, your um, stacks your stacks of the stacks I made a sharp stack and a deep stack you know like the thin paintbrush which had the detail in the middle and a fat paintbrush which had the, the dim bits around the edge right it's a lot of work and I'm just wondering whether it might be an idea if we kind of it, rather than each of us having to like star align every single one of these stacks so that they sit on each on each other for our particular image that we're making maybe we should just have like a this is the frame here's a here's a shot here's the frame um, and everyone who and the people who process the data maybe we could um, make a folder which has all the data the stacks that have been aligned uh, and cropped I don't know what do you guys think it would mean that the next people do you know what I mean it, it would mean that the next person who has a go at processing this data because it's a big job would have a bit of an easier time because you know all the all the um, the um, stacks from all the people previously will have already been aligned with each other. Any thoughts, you, anyone? I think we'll get an image fidelity advantage as well, because then we could register before integration, you know, for the data that's uploaded. And I think that you get some extra resolution there as well. Okay. So, uh, I actually don't, sorry, you, you register the before we upload the integrated stacks so like i'm capturing data i get a whole night's worth of h alpha i would register that master reference frame before integrating and then upload my integrated stack for others to use oh right this is uh i don't think i know about this actually um sorry and also and and i was trying to get obs to show discord in the background <laughs> And uh, I have a. It's entirely possible that I. So so so, the, the registering takes about a sec, couple of seconds. Yeah, it's not a. It's not a particularly um, difficult thing.
Is it is it just is, are, you, are you guys able to uh, do a video? So it's not just me. I would love to be able to have see people's faces when they were asking questions. Can anyone do a video? But not um, video chat. So you mean like turn on cameras? Yeah, just because it will make it won't it won't let me do video. I think because we're already more than yeah, ready. just share screen, but we don't have video permissions. Ah, uh, but it would let you share a screen. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so uh, questions then. Anyone got any questions? Or or yeah, something they don't understand or. Well, I'm sure there are lots of things that we can make better, but we're, we're in the bat and we're trying to do that. But uh, yeah, go ahead. Anyone? Lots of people here. Is it a case of no one wants to ask a question because there's lots of people here, or have we just bored you all properly? Well, you did an amazing job explaining everything, so I don't think. That's <laughs> yeah. I don't believe okay, that. I have a question. I have a question. I'm, I'm never shy. Um, it, it, so there's been a couple things mentioned. There's the the lucky imaging, and then there's the broad brush and dim brush, or, or some type of brushes. Yeah. Does somebody have a document that that are, that talks about those concepts that they can share? Um, and I'll just give it a read, so I I kind of know what. Uh, I what believe we're it is in the channel. Watch this next in the channel three of the bat. Yeah. There's this informational video. Yeah, if you I, I, video, but I have my head is like a sieve. I have poor retention of information. I'll, I'll go reread that. Also, <laughs> also we are gonna. <laughs> also, there's going to be a website that hopefully uh, I know I I'm very much a, I listen and and take stuff in, but I know some people read and take stuff in much better, uh, and we hopefully the website will help those people more. Because uh, it will have this kind of, uh, you know, it'll be there, there in front of you, the aims and the goals, and and hopefully we'll get to write in depth about those things. Um, it it won't happen tomorrow, but hopefully in the coming months we'll have it all laid out there on the Perfect. website. And for, yeah. for whatever it's worth, I, I like writing. So if anybody ever wants to sit down with me for a couple hours and explain things in depth and then have me write a multi-page document, I'm happy to kind of do that. That's well, what I like doing. Well, you've just dug yourself a hole, my friend. And oh, I I... <laughs> as long as the last page has got a TLDR. <laughs> First page will have a TLDR. <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, what about cutoff dates for the target? Oh uh, yeah, I'll tell you what we should do right now is get a cutoff date for M27. If anyone wants to suggest a cutoff date, I just think we should just get it in there now. Because um, presumably M27 is on the wane. And um, maybe we should, if anyone has a suggestion for when the cutoff date is. I could do it, but... I'd, I just won't be able to talk and check where N27 is in the sky at the moment. From my location, actually, M27, it's effectively its highest transit is still coming up. No way! So I'm completely wrong. It looks like okay. around September 6th. Oh, right. Wow. So it's going to go on for ages then. Okay, fine. Good. Why maybe that's, that's what I meant that's what I meant with having multiple targets because we have some optimal targets for Europe at the moment. We have some optimal targets that are coming up for the North American continent. Um so uh and if we concentrate all on one single target then we won't find or we will only find a, a very few people who will have it in in the optimum altitude. For me right now, it's just fine because a big, uh, um, big building is blocking it, and for me, I basically have the uh, first half of the North American sky always, uh, always visible for me, and whatever is uh, gaining in in the European sky is not doable for me. That's what I meant. Like, okay, we have only twenty-seven, and then maybe like uh, for the people who have other targets already coming up, for them. 
Yeah. A second target that is following M27 would already be doable, while for them M27 is not doable anymore. So is NGC 7331 is, is a target as well that we've got now. Um, and then coming up uh, a bit later, we've got more. So it is an interesting question. Do we have lots of targets or do we try and focus on a few? I mean, my feeling is that the Northern and Southern Hemisphere needs a good lucky imaging target. So, I mean, really broad brushstroke would be a galaxy, would be probably a quite a good lucky, especially an edge-on galaxy, be a great lucky imaging target. But maybe we also need a narrowband target. We probably need two targets at any one time in both the North and the South Hemisphere. And then, but we could also do loads more targets, but then actually, actually, is it is that not just diluting the bat? Um one, I mean, I got to be honest. We have been a bit slow with targets. Uh, I wanted to get NGC seven three three one up earlier, but it's it's um, it, yeah. We've we've we need to we need to get moving with it really. Uh, oh no, we've, well we've done it now, but we just you know things just I don't know. It just takes a little while to get the ball rolling. That's all. I don't know what. I'm, um, but if we got two Perhaps. targets. Yeah, but Conste, is two tar is is that still not enough? Did you know about NGC seven three three one? Yeah, and it will be visible for me in two hours. In two hours from now on. Right. So you need you want something a bit before then to be visible, yeah? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm I'm still going to aim at the M twenty seven. Yeah. Aim. Basically, for me, I will enjoy or I will be able to shoot the skies like our North American friends will be able to shoot the skies with. So um, yeah. I basically consider myself a bad North American. Yes. I mean, to, to Elusin, who's in charge of targets, he's not here today. He's been super busy this week, I know. He did great work last week uh, working out, you know, hopefully we're going to have this idea of where people around the, are around the globe. So he's like, I would have, I mean, to be honest, I would have gone, yeah, let's do that one, that one, and that one. But he's taking a really interesting approach where he's getting everyone's location and therefore trying to find targets that are optimal for as many people as possible, right? Um, and he's just busy. I mean, that's, you know, what can we, so he's not really able to push forward uh, just right now um, with that. And as we all, every all the bat members, are, all bat mods are working for free, you know. So that you know, that's that, that's one of the things. That's just part and parcel of the bat. We're all kind of mucking in together, really. Um, I do, however, think it might worth be discussing. I I'd I really like the idea of doing Orion uh, as a lucky imaging target because it's something that people, folks in cities with narrowband filters might actually be able to lucky image and I, I, I live in London for instance so something like that might be quite an exciting target coming up um, and I believe there was one chap Anoko something I maybe got his name completely wrong was looking at there's a star near the trapezium which has got is it just forming and is, am, I, am I right? And there's some kind of accretion disk around it? Is, am I talking out of my ass? Yes, yes it, it's really interesting. In the Orion, you mean, right? Orion, yeah, Orion, sorry, what, what did I say? Yeah, there is the burning star, but it's super small. It's yeah, but... Small. Well but, under an arc second. How much? Yeah. Well under one arc second. Oh, it's sh not imaging. However, I, I have to say, I believe it's possible. I've shared an image from one of the observatories in Germany which is, I'll, I'll admit, it's like high up on the mountain, so it has obvious advantages. But I was able to capture like some kind of details of it. Like you were able to see that this star existed. It was like a brown dot, so it was kind of. Was there? Any, was was, was there? Star. Could you see any way, shape, or form the accretion disk in any any sense? Like or? it was not like sharp, but it was like brown dot instead of a white dot. Like ah, dark, like, brownish part of yeah. the accretion disk. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So that might be a fun one. Um. All right. Well. Any more for any more, or shall we knock this on the head for the moment? Going once, going twice. Think of anything. All righty. Well, thank you very much, everyone. 
and uh, onwards and upwards and hopefully we can get uh, M16 someone can have a go at processing that if I get a chance I'll have a go uh, we'll, when, oh I've got one question for you when should we put M27 when should we knock it on the head like it seems like it could go on for months yeah I think it could but, be like maybe permanent but should we just like knock it on the head because we've gone really deep I know the data that we've got now is going to be nice and deep um, it's going to be a a pain to process but I think we can go better better than we've got so far um, should we just knock it on the head and then start afresh on something new how much benefit are we going to get by continuously shooting it we can't really lucky image it it's not a great lucky imaging target and the reason is that the luminance is quite um, diffuse if you like um, the narrowband gives you nice contrast the image right because you're just shooting the hydrogen clouds whereas the luminance you, the light is light in the dust in that nebula is coming from the hydrogen the oxygen the sulfur the stars um, and it's just sort of bleaching itself out there's not really it's not really very high contrast in the luminance channel and we need high contrast luminance data to really lucky image with right so I'm just I'm wondering whether we should just like set cut a, put a cutoff point on M27. Who's planning on doing more M27? Is anyone, or have we have we done it now? No. I mean, I would. I have plenty of visibility on it if you wanted. But if we have enough data, I wasn't. I, I have enough for myself. So it's not. So what kind of scope have you got, Hatman? Have you got a have you have you got a super fast scope? Um, no, it's F7. Uh, I think I'm imaging at F7. I, I could, right. uh, you know, it's a, it's a five inch refractor, but I also have an SCT that I could go down to F7, but yeah. eight inch. No, I was just curious because Endolf, I believe, Endolf, you're here, aren't you? You did, you actually did five second hydrogen alpha subs, didn't you, on it? Which was. Uh, HAO3 and S2, all at five seconds. Yeah, so what was interesting is Endolf's data doing these five second, like I would just have thought, no way. Because five second is getting on for being lucky image of a ball, yeah? <laughs> and, um, I, I, could, could, I could go shorter, I think I could have got it down to three seconds. So the problem that I found with your data was that it was, of course, very noisy. But it, there was yeah, a lot... Was only the, it, the total integration time was quite short because I'm using yeah. um, Stellar Mate and it downloads the image before it starts taking the next one. So there, there's four seconds of downloading and saving each frame. Ooh. So half, half my time was actually not getting any data. It was yeah. just offloading data from the camera. Yeah. So that's, and, and I mean, not just because of that, but also because such short exposures. And then what percentage did you throw away of them? Uh, I think I threw away around 25% or something in the end. It wasn't a huge number because I looked at yeah. the full width half maximum of them. And actually, there was some where it was over three, but I kept anything where the where the full width half maximum was under three or around the three yeah. mark. I think not by much, but by a little bit, you were the sharpest doing those five second exposures. Um, I mean, it doesn't say a lot because it could be that your seeing was poorer than someone else's, which would also make a big difference. But if there had been a lot of people doing that, uh, and, and sort of just throwing away all the subs that were more than three arc seconds, then we could have got that noisiness right down. Um, so, I, you know, I wonder, I wonder whether it's possible that we get people doing like short exposures as a test on, on this like short narrowband exposures. Um, I don't know. Does anyone have any thoughts on it? I mean, I can try getting some more M27s still visible in my skies if I actually get to see the skies. <laughs> I've had one clear night in the last six weeks, but because um, uh, I've also improved the uh, collimation on my scope, I'm now down closer to two than three. Um, when I look at my narrow, short narrowband subs, even some of my longer narrowband subs are pretty low now at the moment. Um, 
so I can try getting some even shorter ones just to see what happens. Um, if I can get an entire night's worth of HA, for example. Yeah, it's, it's, it's there's so many other th there's a, so one other important thing is the seeing. Like I'd say, if the seeing yeah. wasn't that great, there's just no point in trying it, really. Um, Hatman, do you are you in a are you in a, a dark location or are you somewhere quite? Um, no, I'm like portal eight nine, but I, uh, I do have my my scope semi permanent, and I'm in Southern California, so I get a lot of I get a lot of clear nights. So I yeah. I tend to just do you know long long nights of integration. So yeah, I'm happy to run S, but I was thinking of switching to seven three three one. Yeah, I think yeah okay. Let's do that, and and uh, let's let's think about switching. Let's let's put a month on M twenty seven, right? Another four weeks. I don't want to do it longer than that. I don't think. I'll I'll change the bat targets to say that's the cutoff point. Um, I think that if we're going to practice lucky lucky imaging narrow band, then we need a brighter target than M twenty seven possibly. Although it is pretty bright, isn't it? Um, anyway. I suppose I haven't gone to any conclusion. I'm just waffling. I tell you what, if anyone has a clear night where it is really very calm, if they could try doing five second hydrogen alpha or O3 on M27 uh, and get as much as they can, I, I think that might be that would be a really cool experiment, actually, to see if we can get enough of it to go that bit deeper in the core of M20 in the center bit of M27. Yeah. Just, just as an FYI, if I could throw this out there, I did try the hydrogen alpha at the five seconds, and I did not have enough exposure time. It, yeah. it was horrible and pixelated everything else. So yeah. I ended up having to go to about two minute maximum, uh, yeah. minimum, yeah, in order to get anything on hydrogen alpha. Yeah, and what, I think what? it depends on the camera sensitivity as well as the scope. I mean, I've got f five and I've got a. Uh, QHY 268 uh, uh, the, yeah. Um, yeah the fans the really good one with that chip the, what is it 51 yeah, the, uh, IMX 571 571 yeah 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 it's just so sensitive but you yeah. should get the same sort of sensitivity out of a 294 in the standard yeah. mode rather than the one by one um, well that's the thing is I was running um, a, a 10 inch f4 on the 294 but I was binning at 2.2. I did not try binning at 1.1. Well, 2.2 would give you more sensitivity. Um, hmm. what, what filters What filters were you running? Because I've got three nanometer filters, so I've also got quite a narrow band pass. These are seven nanometer ZWO filters. All right. Well, maybe, maybe um, actually having the increased contrast that you get with the narrower filters, maybe that helped you end of anyway i think that that's a good thing to if everyone's obviously welcome to stay in the chat um and discuss things or go into the the meeting room or the lucky images meeting room or whatever and carry on discussing stuff or we could open up a new chat if, if people wanted to uh i think the bat any of the bat mods can um, but I'm probably going to knock it on the head now. We've been going for an hour, I think. Uh, and, um, uh, yeah, I think. So unless there's any more questions, um, I'm going to bugger off. Thank you very much for coming. And please do carry on your discussions and, and end off if you've got advice to offer. That's what's brilliant about Discord, is you can carry on talking about stuff and getting to the bottom of things and helping each other out. Um, so yes, yeah, thanks, thanks guys. I'm going to head off now. Anyone, you can say goodbye. You may say goodbye now, if you wish. Goodbye. <laughs> That's better. I thought, I wonder how long you're going to let me go on for. Love you. <laughs> All right, bye everyone. Yeah.